Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial for Paul's flight deck. I'm excited to jump into this radio build. Since this is our first build, I want to keep it real simple and functional. So what I decided to do is we're going to start off with a simplified VHF radio. These are the only two functions I actually use in the Zebo is the transfer to change between active and standby frequencies and the VHF control knob for the actual encoder to select your frequencies. It, it's going to cover everything you're going to need and it's going to be a nice clean look and I'm also going to use blue seven segment displays because I prefer that color. You can use whatever color you want that you find but this is what I'm going to be using. Now later on I will be doing a more true to the Zebo mod build with my complex uh, VHF radio. Now this looks more like what's in the Zebo mod. But even in the Zebo mod, you still don't have functions like VHF3, HF2, AM, HF1, the HF sensor, the test button. None of that works. But I think it will still be cool, even if it's a faux panel, to have pushable buttons. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into our VHF radio build series. In part one, I'm going to cover the components used to test what we call prototyping using some typical circuitry parts and the breadboard with the Arduino. I'll also walk you through using the SimVim configurator on their site so we can assign different functions to the Arduino Mega 2560 pins. Before we jump straight into the tutorial, let me touch on the encoder I'm using real quick. So I drew this up in paint to give you a better visual of what I'm talking about, but the part number is here. And you can search for this particular encoder on Amazon or on eBay. I got mine from eBay. I think I got it pack of 10 and they're average about a dollar a piece, which is pretty good. But Amazon has them too. Um, it's an 18 position, 360 degree rotary encoder with a push button. 18 position refers to the detents. And a detent is a, you'll feel a little bump as you spin it. You should feel 18 bumps as you spin the encoder knob. 360 degree rotary encoder rotary encoder it spins in a circle and there's nothing to stop it from spinning a certain range of motion it's a full 360 degrees either way and it has a push button self-explanatory so this rotary encoder is considered a type 1 device and right now type 1 devices with the simvim plug-in double step meaning if you turn one detent for one input to be sent into the actual uh, plug-in you'll actually count by two. So instead of going 100, 101, 102, it'll go 100, 102, 104, 106, 108, and so on. But our good friend Vlad at SimVim has already said that the encoder firmware will be updated in the next version. So it will actually work with type one correctly. Right now it works with type two. And he provided two links here. This is information on the encoder and this is letting you know the notes and what's in development right now with SimVim. So if we scroll down here and we'll find encoders, Further work on the encoder's process and algorithm improvement. Currently, it works with a type 2 encoder, but with type 1, you can see double steps in the D10. So there you go. But don't be alarmed if you see it double stepping. In the near future, this will be resolved, but if you want to bypass this altogether, you can just go buy a type 2 encoder. Next, we're going to jump over to SimVim, and we're going to set up the configurator so that the pins on the Arduino will know what to talk to when we load the plugin in X-Plane. And this is just a list of what we want to do. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to basically use the one encoder to control both megahertz and kilohertz. Megahertz is the left side of the decimal and kilohertz is the right side of the decimal when you're looking at the six digit frequency. The first thing we're going to do is assign the plus and minus pins to adjust the standby in megahertz. And then we're going to assign the plus and minus pins, same pins actually, to adjust standby for the kilohertz side. Then we're gonna configure megahertz to only activate when we're actually pushing in on the button and turning the dial. And then we're gonna configure kilohertz to only activate when the push button is not pressed in. This way we'll be able to use one encoder and simulate what actually happens in the aircraft by pushing it in and not having to use a dual concentric encoder, which they can be pretty expensive or kind of complicated to make. Then we're going to assign the frequency switch button, which is also known as the transfer button. And what that does is switch out your standby and active frequencies. And you'll see more about that when we do a demonstration. But for now, let's go ahead and hop back over to our browser and we're going to go to simvim.com. All right, and then we're going to click configurator up here at the top. This is the SimVim configurator. This is what's going to allow us to select different instruments in the cockpit 
and assign them to the board pins for the Arduino. And then after that, we'll save it and it's going to output a data file that we can drop into our SimVim plugins folder in X-Plane 11. A few little things we want to set up here. We're on full table already. We're on the master board. We have extended and serial selected above this master board pins title, which is good. And then we want to make sure we select two engines because that's how many we have on the 737. And since we'll be working with the communications radio, we're going to select ComNav. Now down here, the very first thing we want to do, if you remember the list I had up earlier, we want to assign communication one standby megahertz. So we're going to select this and it's going to pop up a notification. And this is basically what we're going to set. And it needs two pins for this encoder to work. And it's asking us to set the main controller pin for the table. Now I'm going to go ahead and select eight. And this is where it's going to ask us about the types of encoder we're using. But like we reviewed already, this is not available yet. It will be in the next version. And I will do an update on the video once that's released. So for now, we're going to stick with encoder. Done. And if you look over here, 9 was automatically paired because it needs two pins. Now let's do megahertz standby. And we're going to do three digits by fives because this is going to be a six-digit display I'm doing. So I'm going to click here. It's asking us the same thing. It needs two pins. Select the control pin. Now we're going to select the same eight, and I'll show you why. So here it's letting us know that something's already assigned. What should we do? We're going to append. And again, we can't select this yet, so we're going to hit done. Parameter assigned. So now I've got both megahertz and kilohertz assigned to the same pins. Now if I loaded the sim and tried to spin the encoder, it's going to spin both megahertz and kilohertz at the same time. It's going to drive you nuts. So what we have to do, um, again, like we looked at in my list, is we have to tell it to only set megahertz when we are pushing in on the push button and spinning at the same time, and only set kilohertz when we are not pushing in on the button. So we're going to select pin 8, and then we're going to select item 1, which is megahertz. And we're going to edit the conditions. We're going to click on conditions here. All right, we're going to select input on and it says select controller pin from the right table. We're gonna, this is the pin that the push button will be assigned to and we're gonna go ahead and select 10. And as you can see here, it already has 10 selected and we're gonna hit done. So now what we've done is we've said, okay, we want megahertz to work only when we push it on the button. However, we haven't told it that we want the kilohertz to not work when we're pushing on the button. So what we're gonna do is select eight again and this time we're going to select item number two, which is the kilohertz. And we want to, again, hit edit the conditions. And we're going to do input off. And it says to select the controller pin. We're looking for the button. So we're going to select 10. That is the controller pin for our push button. And you see here it's selected, and we're going to hit done. So now that should work. All right, the last thing we need to do is just add our communication standby flip. This is for communications radio one. We're going to click here and we're just going to assign 12 to that to make it easy. So we've got 8, 9, and 12. That's pretty simple. So here we're just going to save. And down here, we're going to keep the file. It's not going to harm you. It's fine. It puts out a data config. As you can see, I did it earlier just to test it. But we're going to show this in the folder. And as you can tell, it's right here. It went to my downloads. So I'm going to cut this, and then I'm going to navigate over to my X-Plane 11 folder. We're going to go into Resources. We're going to go down to Plugins, and then we're going to select the SimVim folder. You already have a data config here, and typically I just like to delete mine, or I add .bat after it. In case I have an issue, I can go back and remove .bat, and it'll work like it should. So we're going to go ahead and paste. There we go. Okay, now to the fun stuff. What we're gonna need to actually complete this. So we've got our Arduino. I already have power in my USB cable plugged in. I got my breadboard here. We've got our encoder, our tactile switch, our cap for the encoder. Now this is just a really cheap one I got and I could get it here quickly. I'm still waiting on my other one. And I actually have kind of a surprise coming I wasn't in intending on getting that's gonna make this so much more immersive. It may not seem like much, but believe me, it's a big deal. And I'll reveal that later. And we also have an assortment of mail-to-mail -mail jumper wires so we can interface our Arduino with the breadboard. So to start, I'm going to have to use manual focus because the autofocus has been giving people headaches. Let's see here. There we go. I'm sorry for my janky thumb. I hurt myself sometimes. I don't mean to. 
So if you remember the drawing, we have three pins on the side for the actual encoder to spin. We've got our ground in the middle and we have signal on each side. So this is gonna be pin nine, pin eight, we've got ground. The other side is our push button. Sorry, the focus is not too good there. And when we push the push button, the bottom is going to be ground. And the top, oh, wrong way. The top is going to be our signal button. And then we have a tactile switch. Now this is a very, let me get up here, very small tactile switch. To explain how this works, you have two sets of pins here. And if you look, the pins at, the, at their widest section, they face each other. So these two pins are connected and these two pins are connected, which means this is only going to work if we do signal on this side and ground on that side or vice versa. So um, you'll pick up. If it doesn't work, typically you just switch the pins around and it works. Let me go ahead and refocus this back and let's get started. So with the encoder, um, we're going to face three pins left and two pins right. And also, you've got these big fat tabs on here on the top and bottom. You can just carefully bend those out of the way. You might want to use a pair of pliers or something. I just did it with my fingers, but it won't actually go into the breadboard if you don't. And we have this split in the middle. What we want to do is just note. So I know you can't see the numbers real well, but up here we have row 10. I'm going to put the top left pin in row 10, and I'm going to put the top right pin in row 10 and we're going to straddle this center line here where it divides the breadboard and you may have to play with the pins a little bit to get it actually go in but it looks like we did a pretty good job first time and then i'm going to actually go ahead and add you can't see it but the d shape here to the top of the shaft of the encoder pop the cap on be careful because if you push too hard you can just like bend all the pins and it'll go flying next i'm going to take our encoder and it's only going to work one way. If you turn it one way, it actually won't straddle this center line and allow you to connect it. So you know you have it the right way. It won't let you put it in the wrong way. So I'm just going to pick lines 35, 36, and 37 here. And I've got 10, 11, and 12 up here, if, you, if you're wondering. So step one, I always ground first. So we're going to go into the GND, which is the ground pin on the Arduino on the right side under where the USB connection is. And again, this entire row next to blue for ground is will be live ground. As soon as this is plugged in, everything's active for ground on that blue line. So now we have that done, let's go ahead and run another ground to the middle pin because the middle pin is our ground. I'm just gonna keep it over here to the left out of the way and go ahead and ground this in a way that it keeps the wire from bunching up over the encoder. All right, so then the top wire, we're going to go with white. And we're going to go into the pin next to the top signal pin. Oh, unplugged a little bit. And this is, we're going to use eight for, or let's go nine. We have eight, nine. We'll go pin nine in the Arduino to the top pin of the encoder. And then we're going to use the red pin to go to the bottom pin on the encoder. And we're going to put that... If I don't unplug it first, we're going to put that in pin eight and we have our pair there. So the push button, there we go. Our push button, it quit 10. So we're going to run an orange wire from 10 in the Arduino to the top right pin on the encoder there we go nice and out of the way and it's connected and then we also need to ground the bottom right pin on the encoder so we're just going to plug it into the parallel a parallel slot here to that and we're going to go directly let's go down a little bit to keep that wire out of the way and we've got it grounded now our tactile switch or um, just a push button switch really a, a momentary switch i believe is what it's more commonly referred to and we're going to go ahead and we need to ground that. So we're going to stay on this side for ground. And I'm going to ground the top out. So we got the top grounded and I'm going to connect it here. Hopefully you can see that still we have our push button there. And then I'm going to run a little bit longer signal wire. This is going to go into pin 12, I believe, on the Arduino. And then we're going to connect it to this side on the left bottom row to pin out the push button. 
so we're done that's it we've got everything configured like we need to we have a few wires left over so now we're going to jump on into x plane and load it up and see if we can't get our radio working So we're in X-Plane, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a new flight. And we're going to use, of course, <laughs> the Zebo. And I want to make sure that we've got it starting with engines running. That'll be good. And we're going to be, it doesn't matter what, what airport you want to do. We're going to be Atlanta, real world conditions, and we're going to hit start flight. We're going to go ahead and jump ahead a little bit so you don't have to wait for this to load. All right, so what we want to do real quick is go to plugins, SimDim cockpit, and we're going to look at the status to see what's going on. Okay, we're connected already. That was quick. And I'm going to close that, and let's see how it goes. So we're going to first just turn the knob and see if only the right, should be able to see this, just the right side of our standby frequency, which is the kilohertz frequency. Only that should move. And let's see how this goes. Hey, hey, look at that. And then I'm gonna push in and hopefully just the megahertz changes. I wanna push down, I gotta click and then turn. Hey, look at that. Now, one thing I wanna tell you is sometimes when I was testing this before, I think it's best to push in and change your megahertz first, then change your kilohertz. All right. Now we're gonna hit the transfer button and see if we can switch these out. Hey, there it goes. It's all worked. Thank you guys again for tuning in to watch another tutorial with Paul's Flight Deck. Until the next video, have a good one.